Well, hey guys, I am Lynn Hansen. I'm one of the pastors here at North Park Church, and uh, happy that you're in our life group, happy to be sharing with you this way. Uh, if I look a little bit scruffy to you, it's uh, because, see there, it's because I am on vacation. And uh, so I'm coming to you from the happy land of vacation. Um, we're in a great new series, uh, sort of new anyway now, um, but uh, it's just called Help. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting thing, isn't it, that help is available all the time. I know you've had the same experience that I have. We've gone someplace and we've been surrounded by help or, or you know, right at home or whatever. We're surrounded by help and yet we don't get the help that we need. So what is it that keeps you from getting the help that you need? That's what we're talking about. Well, sometimes it's that we simply are not getting the rest that we need, and that's why, um, you know, help is so hard to find and why we're trying to find peace. We just are not getting the rest that we need. And that's what we talked about last weekend. That's what Pastor Brian taught us about. And uh, you, you need to find a rest that will actually give you peace. We all find different ways to try to rest, but you need one that will give you peace in, in your inner being, in your soul. And so let's talk about that uh, in our life groups this week. The story we're looking at is from Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 36. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you the story, but listen very, very carefully, would you please, because somebody in your group is going to step forward and uh, try to retell the story from memory as best they possibly can. Everybody else add in what it is that uh, they might have missed, and uh, you're going to retell the story at the end. So to start with, let me tell you this story. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet weeping. Her tears fell on his feet and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. She is a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered, I suppose the one for whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from your feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven only little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, Who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. All right, go ahead and uh, somebody step up and, and retell that story as best you can and everybody else add in what they might have missed and rebuild that story. Go ahead, would you please? Well, let's uh, look at some discussion questions. Uh, are you ready for this? I'm sure you are. Question number one, what kinds of things have you gone to in order to get peace? Uh, just, uh, you know, seek God on this and, and let him kind of show you what it is that you've run to. And uh, talk about some of the things that you've gone to to try to get peace. Go ahead. All right, as you look at our story, what did Simon go to for peace? What was his go-to thing, you know? 
and, and what did the woman go to for her peace? Talk about that, would you please? Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, quite a contrast, isn't it, between the woman and the Pharisee Simon? Uh, one was willing to do absolutely anything to get some peace, you know, really willing to get outside their comfort zone to get some peace. And uh, the other felt like he could work his peace out for himself. He'd already figured out how to get personal peace, you know, and, and uh, he was going to produce that himself, right? So uh, question three, how did seeking peace in, in the wrong source keep Simon from getting the help that he needed? All right, pray about that a moment and think about it, uh, meditate on that, chew on that. And let me ask you again, how did seeking peace in the wrong, from the wrong source keep Simon from getting the peace or the help that he needed? Go ahead and, and talk about that. Uh, question number four, what were some of the things that made the woman successful in her attempt to gain peace? All right, uh, you're going to have to dig deep on this one, so really consult the Holy Spirit and let Him work in your life here. What were some of the things that made the woman successful in her attempt to gain peace? Go ahead and talk about that, please. Question five, getting very personal now, how could you be more successful at gaining peace in your life? All right, considering what we've learned and understood from God's Word so far and by His Holy Spirit teaching us, how could you be more successful at gaining peace in your life? Go ahead and talk about that, please. Last question, question number six. This is the takeaway question, and we call it that because the question is this. What does God want you to take away from your life group this week? What is the big thing? What is the, the thing that God wants you to get a hold of and walk away from your life group with this week? Go ahead and talk about that. Well, guys, uh, God bless you for being here, and uh, just pray for your growth, and uh, I will see you soon.